Welcome to day nine of our DIY custom high top van build project. You can see it's taking shape. Um, if you didn't see yesterday's video from day eight, we'll give you a quick recap of what we did or where we left off yesterday. It's a beast. <laughs> we admit it. I think it, we've been looking at every other um, high top van and RV, class B, class C things we see around. This is still smaller than a lot of them. And I say that is from having me from measurements and from just appearance. I think it just looks weird because we're not used to seeing it this way. And also because it's not finished. It's just a wood box. We haven't, which is kind of what they are anyways, wood in or fiberglass, whatever. We haven't finished it. So when it's finished, I think it'll look much more normal or much more natural uh, up there. My daughter-in-law has taken to calling this thing the mega van or the monster van alternately. So... They're both pretty good app descriptions, maybe. So let me know what you think in the comments about that. Melanie's kind of calling it White Lightning. I don't know. You guys should let us know what you think because this has never really been properly named since I've owned it. So maybe we'll do something with that finally. Anyway, we'll show you around real quick what we've done. Um, we'll, we start in the back here because, I mean, everybody starts in the back, right? This is still open. We haven't closed the back in yet. Why not? Well, the primary reason is that that's our only source of light in there right now unless I want to bring out a Blue Eddy and, uh, and a lamp because we took all these house electric out of it to do the build. So there is uh, um, that, that we need the light to when we're doing the build project. So uh, that, that's still open. That'll get closed in, but that's going to be pretty easy to close in. There's also a chance we'll do something different with it. Uh, I saw a video last night. Guy had a little hatch on the back that opened up, lets in lots of light and airflow. I don't know that we will do that. Melanie's joked about making that area there, which is supposed to be a gin ginormous storage closet. She's joked about make making it a nap nook for her. Uh, you never know, that might happen still. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can kind of see the, the build here, and that that's the only outside thing we really got to do other than getting some exterior coating on it. So th this side looks exactly like the other side. We're going to be putting windows in here. Um, we just don't want to put windows in or plant windows until we're sure how we're arranging the inside build, which we're not going to be. We have a few ideas. We're not going to settle on that until we figure out for sure where we're putting things inside. Then we'll decide where we want the windows so that they're most useful and they're not even potentially annoying. Coming around to the front, it looks kind of the same. You can see my goofed up screws because I did not mark the screw locations and I was standing so close to it standing on the hood I thought I was putting them in an even line and I didn't so that's kind of amusing I suppose this area is still open underneath here and there's a little bit of that in the back too so we have to close this in this is gonna be getting closed in today uh, that's that's on the top of the list for today we also have to do some trimming around here where as much as I tried to make this thing square uh, the bottom line is that this entire van is rounded top to bottom, bottom to top, like a bar of soap, I like to call it, and it's rounded front to back like a bar of soap. So the entire roof slopes four different directions, for example. So we're trying to make it straight and square, but we're also bolting lumber onto the roof, which kind of causes it to bow a little bit. So it's not perfectly square, and ultimately it doesn't matter for anything we're doing. It just annoys me a little bit. And as a result of that, our perfectly square uh, plywood we put on our pan wood wall panels exterior wall sheathing doesn't perfectly fit so we're gonna trim well it fits but it hangs over a little so we're gonna trim that off today to get that looking good and I'll show you real quick we'll go inside I'll show you where we left off yesterday and then we got to get to work because to, I got a late start today because I've been uploading uh, editing and uploading uh, a video in this series that you'll hopefully already have seen by the time you're watching this one. Um, but then it's also uh, our, our granddaughters will be taking them to church tonight for a youth program. So we have to quit by like four o'clock so we can uh, go get out to where they're at, bring them to church and everything. And then I got to sit in the parking lot while they're in church and I'm going to be doing some work on my computer for a freelance client. So busy day. So we got to jump onto this because I'm late getting started already because of editing. And now I got to do this and then we got other stuff. So we'll come in and show you what we got going on in the van here, the mega van or the monster van or whatever you want to call it. All 
Okay, so again, behind me, this is our giant storage closet. Why is it so big? Well, simply because we wanted to leave enough. Uh, we wanted to have storage, and we left two uh, extra support here. The, the uh, horizontal support for structure and strength and everything. Um, and then we decided, what the heck, if we're already doing this, why not extend it a little over the back of the van? That gives us like an extra uh, foot on the back in terms of storage it does not extend past the bumper though so it still works out it doesn't make it any bigger this thing is still even though it looks monstrous it is still fits within the standard footprint of the van so i can still and we've driven this a few times we can park in a standard parking spot so that's great but this is storage that melanie says she might like to take for her uh nap nook so you never know what might happen maybe we'll put windows in there or something for her i don't know we'll see and then coming around you can see it's all Framed in, we've got the wall sheathing on and everything. Uh, we will be putting insulation in here, hopefully this week, I don't know. And same in the roof. And then up here is the bed, the bunk, whatever you want to call it. It's massive. <laughs> so this is where we left off. We're running some lumber here. If you want a full explanation of why we're doing what we're doing here and why I don't recommend you do it, check out the day eight video that we did yesterday. But we're going to be finishing this up today, trying to close things in, seal everything off. And so that's where we left off. So I got a, uh, this one. My first project for today is to bore out some holes so we can access these bolts um, in case we ever need to tighten anything down. So and I did the same in the back where the plywood is, and we'll do the same with the plywood when it goes on. So we want to make sure we can access everything uh, if we need to tighten something down. So that's the first process, project. Do that. We'll secure this thing. Everything's getting glued and screwed. Then the plywood's going in. And we'll do insulation and stuff after that. And I am, I think I'm going to put in a couple of corner braces in the front here for um, uh, just a little extra structural support on the front end where it's likely to get the most wind and potentially some uh, horizontal wind shear and stuff. My, I talked to my son last night. He was looking at that was his only suggestion too was maybe putting some corner braces in. So I think we'll do that just to strengthen it up a little bit. It's frankly, it's already overbuilt. I don't think it'll be a problem, but it never hurts to be safe. And to be sure, when you're when you're doing a project like this, it is a lot of profile. Um, and we went with uh, this is a 36 inch top, and we can't, as far as I know, you can't buy one of those in fiberglass or anything. And the ones that you can find are curved and all that. And we didn't want to do all that, so we're going to put a fairing or a wind deflector on the front eventually, but it's not part of the structure. And right now, it goes down the road fine. We've been driving it around. It does not have. It's a one ton suspend van, so it does not have any any noticeable sway or anything so but anyways it's 36 inch top as it stands right now we've got like 32 inches or so maybe uh maybe gonna be 31 by the time we get done with all the framing and insulation and interior walls and stuff so even though it's 36 we still don't have that much we have like 31 or 32 which is comfortable for crawling in and out of bed turning over while you're trying to sleep that sort of stuff if we went with a 24 top we'd be actually be down to about 21 maybe when we're and then you're like literally like snake crawling in and out of bed and you're trying to roll over and whacking your elbow on the roof and everything and that's not going to be fun and important a good night's sleep is important so we're gonna uh get to work here i've talked long enough but i just wanted to give a recap because i know things are happening fast here and maybe yeah, people haven't caught every single video i'm gonna get to work <laughs> we appreciate you guys all following along with this project Look at that. <laughs> All right. So I'm using a real low tech method to mark the location of the bolts where I need to drill them out or drill the board out. And yesterday I measured and I got pretty close, but I'm doing it low tech today. We're just whacking it and that'll make an, the bolt will make an impression on the back of the board. Sorry for the noise there, but there's a little dent. And this one you can sway me see a little better. But there's the dent, and that's where we're going to drill it out, and it'll be sitting right over the bolt. So if we need to get in there, I can pop a socket in there in the future and, and uh, access it to tighten things up. The nut, of course, is right down here on the bottom. And uh, obviously we'll trim these off too when we're done so nobody hits their head on it. But.
see if it fits. All right, with a little luck, this will fit. I drilled them in the right place. There's one. There's two. All right, we'll uh, I'll mark this. We'll glue it down, and then I'll throw some screws in. And as I was sharing in the video yesterday, when I talked about why you might not want to do it the way we're doing it, we are blocking, putting blocks in under these things against the metal roof to provide some additional support because these are kind of not really uh, ideal for supporting human weight on a bed frame, a bed platform. So we're going to actually, uh, block, we'll be blocking it and then uh, we'll be putting plywood on. The plywood is going to be glued and screwed to these as well. So everything's going to be kind of one uh, hole. So I think it's going to work fine for us. If it doesn't, we'll do something different. Uh, but it's maybe not the best way to do it. But we're trying not to lose another, any more headroom. So we're trying to keep it uh, to where, it, uh, you know, we got as much room as possible for, for space. So, all right, throw some uh, glue in there. Construction adhesive specifically, uh, which is quite strong. And then we'll... Okay, make sure we get this thing set up right. If you saw yet the video from day two, you know there's a brand new cock gun, and I had a little trouble figuring out how to use it. It was a little embarrassing, but hey, it's real life, so we did not cut it out. I kept it in there, because Melanie filmed me not knowing how to use a cock gun, so. <laughs> it's a little bit different mechanism than the ones I'm used to, so. All right, there it is. Um, did I just flip this thing over, or did I just move it? I think I just moved it, okay. I don't want to put it on upside down and get it all goopy. All right, there we go. Wait a minute, that's not right. I did mess it up. It's not hanging over the lip here. Well, let's try this. There we go. Yeah, okay, I had it backwards. All right, it's supposed to be overlapping this metal lip. In the front is kind of a jagged edge so all right we still got glue on there we're just off a little bit made a bit of mess that won't hurt anything throw some screws in here now and secure it down forever we are building this high top in such a way that we expect it to serve us for as long as we own the van and then to still be useful for whoever gets it next so this is not like a quick project we're trying to do it right That's in. We'll throw some uh, block, blocks in, blocking in under here to help support everything. And we'll be back with you uh, when we're ready to put some plywood in. I feel like we're kids and we're like building our own tree fort or something like that. It's a little bit tricky trying to get these bigger sheets in here. All right. Now, which side do you like better? here. All right, we're getting ready to do some spray foam in the back here. I'll explain that, but before I do, I gotta say, anytime I ask you can say shake well or shake vigorously, it reminds me of an uncle, Ed, who, when we were teenagers, I remember he, anytime he saw shake well on a bottle, he'd say, shake well. Yeah, start shaking, okay. Anyway. Always reminds me of Eddie, so Uncle Eddie. So we've done the best we can with closing this in. 
this thing is rounded. I've mentioned this before, but this van, the entire van is rounded top to bottom. The roof is rounded side to side, is rounded front to back. It's like a big bar of soap, okay? It's maybe not as aerodynamic as the Prius over there, but they definitely rounded it out on purpose. So, and that's fine. It makes it challenging when you're trying to build on it. It's one of the reasons people like the newer, more square vans, like the Transit Promasters, Sprinters, what have you. We closed it as best we can, and there's still some gaps up there. So what we're gonna do, our strategy, and again, I'm not, like so many times in this van build, I think it's gonna work and it's gonna meet our needs. I'm not saying this is the way you should do it or this is the best way to do it. Every van custom DIY high top I've seen has been done differently. There's no blueprint, there's no uh, manual for doing this. You're gonna figure it out on your own. That's the joy of custom work on vehicles, right? Um, so anyway, we're gonna put some spray foam in here. When it's done doing its thing, we'll trim it off. And then our plan is to, once we have it trimmed off and nice and smooth, we're gonna use Flex Seal or a similar uh, spray uh, rubber type membrane stuff in a can. And it's, it's, it sprays like spray paint, but it makes a rubbery membrane that's waterproof and everything and airproof. So we're gonna, uh, or not, it's not air permeable, it's air impermeable and water impermeable. So we'll spray that up in there and that should give us a nice airtight and watertight barrier. We're starting on the back because I figure the, mo the more sensitive one is in the front where it's gonna have wind driven rain and stuff coming at it when we're driving. So we're practicing in the back and then we'll go to the front. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm gonna continue shaking vigorously. The challenge with this stuff is you really can never predict exactly where it's gonna end up because it just keeps going and growing and all that stuff. But I think it'll do the job. It should seal it up pretty good. And uh, like I said, we'll actually coat the outside of it then with some kind of rubber membrane type stuff to make sure we can, uh, it's all weather sealed. Structurally, everything's closed in. We just want to fill in the gaps there. And you can see that I left Melanie to this project. She has more patience than I do, so. I know patience is a virtue, I'm working on it, but no one has more patience than me. Well, we got the spray foam all done in, or at least our two cans, we ran out. We're taking a quick break to get another drink and have some food, because we haven't eaten yet today, and it's like after one in the afternoon, and Melanie's doing the honors of cooking. Maybe I'll learn how to cut an angle for I'm done after all. With a handsaw, mind you, not with a compound miter saw. Because that would have been too easy. Take all the fun out of it. I was just telling Melanie a minute ago off camera. I think this won't be too bad for getting in out of when we have a step or a ladder to come up in forwards. But as it stands, having to like stand on a little box and grab <laughs> the, the side rail and the platform and jump backwards and try not to hit our head, and it's a little bit rough. And then you gotta do a flip-flop when you get up here to get around where you gotta get. So I think it'll be fine once we're able to come up face first. And I can't say a few more inches wouldn't be nice, but I think this is pretty workable and we're probably tall enough already. We're, we're still shorter than a lot of RVs, but it's a big adjustment for what we do. this van was. And we definitely got to get some roof vents in. The uh, challenge with high tops of any sort or RVs is that you have your normal windows down low. So even if you have all them open, even if you have some air moving, you get this two to three feet of dead space and the air just doesn't circulate up here so getting some vents in and windows at some point will really help with letting air exchange up here and it won't be so stuffy it's like being in an attic ha all right they ain't perfect but i can live with it 
All right, we're going to call that a wrap for day nine of the DIY custom van high top build project. It's early today. It's only, uh, let me see, not quite three o'clock, but we've reached a good stopping point and we need to quit by four so we can get out, out of town to pick up a few granddaughters, bring them to church tonight to a program there. And want to make sure we have time to get that done. And I got computer work and other things to do today too, so I'll be wrapping up some of that. We're at a good stopping point here. Next thing on our to-do list is uh, covering on the roof. And so that'll be tomorrow because we need to go to Home Depot to get materials. And we'll be going from there um, on the roof. So that'll be the next video, day 10. Uh, so watch for that one. And I think that's it. <laughs> I got a bit of a headache from the heat and all the crawling around and everything, so I might go find another cold drink and some Excedrin or something. And we'll catch you in the next video, everybody. Thanks for following along with this series.